Hello. In this video, which is the first in a sequence about the chemistry of epoxides, we're going to give a brief overview of the functional group and talk about the synthesis of epoxides. Right. Uh, so an epoxide is a three-membered ring cyclic ether. Um, and, and most people will use epoxide uh, for the name of this functional group, but just so you know, uh, it has a different name that you will sometimes see. Uh, the, the formal IUPAC name of this molecule, the simplest epoxide, is oxirane. And sometimes you will see oxirane as uh, the generic name of the functional group as well. <clears throat> like all sort of three-membered ring uh, or three membered rings, there is a lot of angle strain in here, and that's going to dominate the chemistry of the epoxides. Uh, and in the next two videos, we'll talk about uh, how to use that angle strain to accomplish some interesting, interesting reactions. Uh, uh, first, well, let's get to the synthesis. Uh, epoxides are generally synthesized by reaction of an alkene start with a generic looking alkene at the moment with some sort of epoxidation agent. Uh, commonly used reagents are peroxy acids, uh, where R can be a wide range of things. Uh, <clears throat> and that converts the alkene into the epoxide, like so. Uh, a common peroxy acid is MCPBA, which is metachloroperoxybenzoic acid, mouthful. So <clears throat> here is a, a compound that I'm happy to use its uh, abbreviation. One of the most important advantages of MCPBA, whoa, too many oxygens. One of the most important advantages of MCPBA is that it is a solid, um, unlike some of the peroxy acids, which are liquids. And so you'll notice this looks a lot like a carboxylic acid, but it has this extra oxygen atom in between the OH and the carbonyl group. And it's this extra oxygen atom where all of, you know, where all of the, the interesting behavior is going to occur. <clears throat> The mechanism of this reaction is, and I'm going to draw it as follows. I'm going to uh, actually just use some generic peroxy acid because only the, the peroxy acid is part of the mechanism here. I want, Give me a moment to set this up because I actually want this to look uh, in a particular way. So oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen, carbonyl, and here is my R group. Now, <clears throat> this extra oxygen atom on the uh, peroxy acid is actually electrophilic. It's attached to something that's uh, so-so leaving group. Um, and so your, your alkene, which is nucleophilic, can reach out and form a bond. Uh, but at the same time, there's a lone pair on this oxygen that can go back and form a new bond with the carbon. So here is the epoxide former. To account for what weirdness is going on at the, uh, on the other side of the oxygen, uh, <clears throat> the carbonyl group is reaching out to grab the hydrogen. The oxygen-hydrogen bond is breaking to form a new lone pair on the oxygen. And the other oxygen-carbon bond is going to be forming a new carbon-oxygen double bond. So if this mechanism looks like I have drawn way more arrows than you would ever be allowed to get away with in any other situation, then yes, actually that's what I've done. But 
what's really happening is that this one extra oxygen is being excluded uh, is the, from the peroxy acid. The peroxy acid is sort of reorganizing to exclude this extra oxygen atom, which is forming bonds to the alkene. And all of this is concerted. It all happens at the same time. And in a moment, we'll talk about how I know that, how we know that. <clears throat> And then after this reorganization, we now just have a regular old carboxylic acid left behind. Uh, this reaction is uh, stereospecific, which is how we know that we have a concerted mechanism, however bizarre. Uh, and, you know, for this point, I'm going to just see MCPBA. I'm just going to use MCPBA. It's common enough for this purpose that uh, we will, you will we'll, you'll see it quite a lot. So we'll just use it. Um, and the, the epoxide forms from the same face of the molecule. If we're talking about an alkene where maybe there are uh, or maybe the product might also be chiral, then the reaction is still stereospecific in that the epoxide group is formed facing the same direction. And then you might actually be able to figure out that for angle strain purposes, it would, you can't, you can't have one up and one down. you know, racemic mixtures uh, are going to form here. There are other reagents out there that can be used uh, to form epoxides. They're metal catalyzed re reactions and so on, but almost all of them involve delivering an oxygen atom to an alkene through some kind of similar process. There is one other way uh, that's worth talking about, and that's via the halohydrin. Uh, <laughs> Noting, of course, that the halohydrin is something that you synthesize from the alkene, but you know, depending on other functional groups that might be present in the molecule, it might be more convenient to first form the halohydrin. So that's a reaction of an alkene with halogen in the presence of water. Um, and this generates a chiral molecule, so we're plus an antimer. Whoops. Not, not like plus charge and antimer. And then what happened was next is if you treat this with an appropriate base, like, oh, say, sodium hydride, to deprotonate the alcohol, you're doing, in, in effect, what is an intramolecular uh, Williamson ether reaction to make the epoxide. In the next two videos, I'll talk about the reactions on which epoxides undergo ring opening reactions, uh, first with bases or strong nucleophiles, and then, and then under protic conditions with weaker nucleophiles. Thank you for watching.